we thank Dr. Martin van Nirop, who will uh, share his insights on the imperative of air quality. We remember a few days ago on the 7th of uh, September, uh, just three days ago, it was the International Day of Clean Air for Blue Skies. And we are informed that 99% or nine out of 10 people, they uh, breathe polluted air. So I, I suppose uh, uh, Dr. Martin van Nirop will help us understand the dynamics of this uh, pollution in the air and uh, the quality of the air. So Dr. Martin van Nirop has a BA with uh, psychology and sociology, majors from UNISA, and a doctorate in chemical engineering from the University of uh, Witwatersrand, Johannesburg. He became interested in the research, in research management and managed several large contract research projects at the university. One of those was a study of brown haze air pollution problem over Cape Town. Brown haze air pollution problem over Cape Town. The project was conducted by the Climatology Research Group under the leadership of uh, Professor Stuart Pickett in 2003. During 2004, Dr. Van Nirop, who had left the university, partnered with Professor Pickett and managed the formation of Gondwana Environmental Solution Pty Limited. It is, is, is a specialist uh, air quality and climate change consultancy. Martin has been uh, the managing director of Gondwana Group, which includes Aero Africa, a distributor of environmental monitoring equipment. He has worked in on numerous air quality and climate climate change projects over the last 20 years. He has He's a certified natural scientist with the South African Council of Natural Science Professionals. He is currently a member of the board of National Association of Clean Air, National Association for Clean Air. Martin has collaborated with the Society of Jesus for many years on environmental issues, including co-authoring a, a workbook called Care for Our Common Home on La Rato Sea with Father Anthony Egan and coordinating the Justice in Mining Network uh, Working Group for the Jesuits in Africa, con um, Jesuit con African Conference until uh, 2022. So we welcome Dr. Martin van Nirop and we thank you for your time and looking forward to hear your insights on this important and imperative. Thank you so much and the floor is yours. Many thank you, Rampe, and uh, good evening, everybody. Um, let me share my screen. All right. Um, I believe I'm sharing and uh, the presentation is in uh, presentation mode. Yes, we can see it. It's, it's in presentation mode. Thank you. Great. Thank you. I'm just going to start uh, timing here. So... At, uh, this evening, I'm going to talk about the imperative of air quality. And uh, yeah, we see a mother standing over the, the grave of a four and a half year old Mpo. And uh, Mpo uh, died due to the complications of an illness um, that was caused due to the effects of poor air quality. So... Air quality, why is it important? I think I've just given you a, a good hint as to why it's important. I'll also talk about what is air quality. I'm going to share how we manage air quality. Um, I'm going to talk about how air quality is linked to climate change. How can I know what air quality is in my area? And finally, I'm going to share some ideas about what, what can I do? What can we do related to air quality? So why is air quality important? Um, Rampe has always said, already said that we just recently celebrated the, the International Day for Clean Air. And in fact, um, last week I was at the, the annual uh, conference, um, National Association for Clean Air Conference. Um, and um, we learned a lot about uh, how air quality is being managed. But this quote from UNICEF uh, gives a, a good indication 
um, that air pollution accounted for uh, three and a half thousand deaths of children under five years in South Africa in 2021. So that picture that I started off with of Mpo who had died um, is not um, unusual in South Africa, unfortunately. And um, um, air quality is definitely something that we need to, to, to be cognizant of and, and take into consideration. The World Health, World Health Organization also gives um, some statistics. Um, and and uh, in the 2024 um, reports, they, they said that in 2019, air pollution caused about 6.7 million deaths uh, due to um, attributable to non-communicable diseases. So basically, air pollution is, is making us sick and people are dying as a result of air quality. It's not only the World Health Organization and the United Nations that talk about air quality. Um, in 2015, uh, Pope Francis um, launched uh, Laudato Si, an encyclical. And um, I was very excited at the time because it was the first time that I felt that um, my, my profession being in air quality and in and the environment and and my faith as a as a Catholic came together in in one document, and uh, um, I, I I eagerly awaited the launch of Laudato Si, and when it came out, um, I was on a flight in 2016 back from um, North America with uh, Russell Pollard, who had just been appointed the director of the Jesuit Institute, and we were talking about Laudato Si. And uh, he challenged me and he said, you know, we've got all of these uh, resources around Laudato Si, but we don't have uh, one that's local to, to Southern Africa. So um, that's how our workbook, Care for the Common Home, was born. And uh, I'd like to just quote a couple of um, quotes from Laudato Si. It's all a bit wordy, but basically um, the, the, the what, what I want to point out here is that Pope Francis talks about how we are making our our, our sister, uh, Pope Francis refers to like St. Saint, Saint Francis uh, as the earth as our sister. And uh, he says that we're making our sister sick by by um, treating her badly and that she, she groans in travail. Um, that's one of the quotes. I'm not going to read it in detail. Also in Laudato Si, Pope Francis uh, quotes uh, Patriarch Bartholomew about um, environmental issues. But um, he, he, he says that, uh, Patriarch Bartholomew says that the, the way that we are destroying our earth by um, causing changes in climate, um, by contaminating the water and the air specifically, um, he calls them sins, and and he says the reason is the reason why all of this is a sin is because to commit a crime against the natural world is a sin against ourselves and a sin against God. So quite quite uh, damning words from um, Patriarch Bartholomew, um, who's the um, was quoted by Pope Francis in in Laudato Si. Um, Pope, Pope Francis goes on to say that um, air pollution specifically um, are, are, are bad for people's health and uh, is, is specifically exposure to atmospheric pollutants uh, cause a, a, a wide spectrum of diseases. And there's also um, um, damage to, to the environment by, by air pollution. So basically, um, the World Health Organization, the UN, Pope Francis have all said that pollution in the atmosphere is, is bad and it, and it has a health impact. Um, what are those health impacts? Um, so um, they can cause um, primarily um, damage to our upper respiratory tract. They cause infections there. Um, but uh, specifically particulates, dust, uh, as they call it here, uh, will call, cause health impacts. 
And uh, you can see on the picture here all the various parts of the body that, that are uh, impacted by poor air quality. So as an ex it's a bit small, but uh, you can see as an example that um, the liver, spleen, and blood are damaged by um, uh, elevated concentrations of nitrogen dioxide. Um, and um, there's a number of different uh, ailments that can be caused by, by poor air quality. Also, the air, poor air quality has um, environmental impacts. And on the right-hand side, you can see a list of the, the potential environmental impacts. Um, and um, uh, um, poor air quality can lead to bio, uh, loss of biodiversity. Um, pollutants in the air create acid rain. And when, the, when, this, when rain falls onto, onto buildings, onto plants, uh, onto... Um, the natural environment, the, the acid rain uh, causes damage to, to that environment. <laughs> so but air quality, poor air quality has, has a number of, of um, different impacts. And, and we can see from, from the quotes that I've just uh, uh, mentioned and, and these facts here, that looking at air quality is not something that we can easily ignore. It's something that we, we should uh, look into and take um, take heed of. So, what is air uh, air quality? How how is air quality defined? So, I've taken uh, some quotes here from the the Collins English Dictionary, and in English, air quality is the composition of the air in terms of how much pollution it contains. Um, that's a, just a sort of layman's uh, definition of of air quality. Uh, in chemical engineering, the definition is air quality is the degree to which air is suitable or clean enough for humans, animals, or plants to remain healthy. And the World Health Organization uh, defines uh, air pollution uh, as a contamination of the indoor or outdoor environment by any chemical, physical, or biological agent that modifies the natural characteristics of the atmosphere. And we we normally um, consider uh, poor air quality as 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 a result of of those pollutants that we as humans put into the atmosphere. So, by by our activities, we contaminate the air, and and cause the the concentrations of those specific pollutants to increase. The they are of of course natural um, causes of those uh, pollutants into the atmosphere, um, but uh, mostly there's nothing that we can do about it. Um, but certainly, if we if those those pollutants that we put into the atmosphere is something that we can attend to. So when air quality is good, the air is clear and contains only a small amount of solid particles and chemical pollutants. So poor poor air quality is that when the 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 air contains high levels of pollutants. The air is often hazy and dangerous to the health and to the environment. So the picture shows. Uh, on the left, uh, a relatively clean air, where you can see the, the road and the, and the buildings. And on the right, the, 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 the air quality is, is dramatically poorer. The air is hazy and you know difficult to see. And uh, that's a clear example of, of poor air, air quality. However, sometimes um, air quality can be clear and and you won't and looks fine but uh, can contain pollutants that are dangerous to our health some of um, especially the the gas pollutants are, are, are not visible so for example elevated uh, concentrations of sulfur dioxide you won't see them but uh, they are definitely harmful to to our health um, I I had the fortune um, one year of accompanying um, Stuart, Stuart Pickett to, um, he was doing some work for ESCOM and um, we went to up on a stack um, in Lepalale, the power station um, at Lepalale, we went right up into the stack. And while, was, uh, while Stuart was tinkering with the equipment there, I went right to the top of the stack to, to see if I could enjoy the view and when I stepped out uh, on the top of the stack there, um, 
I, got, I, I was almost, uh, I had to catch my breath because of the, the sulfur dioxide and uh, I got a, a good dose of, uh, of, of sulfur dioxide, even though I couldn't see it, I could definitely feel its effects on me. So sometimes um, air quality can't, poor air quality can't be seen. So when we talk about pollutants, um, what are those air pollutants? Um, in South Africa, um, uh, the government has defined criteria pollutants, um, and those are pollutants that um, we we take particular heed of uh, because they they're the ones that are known to cause health health impacts. Um, particulate matter is is basically very fine dust. Um, and uh, initially, the, the criteria pollutant was uh, PM10, which is particulate matter whose uh, diameter is less than 10 microns, um, so very small. But later on, the further research showed that the smaller the particles are, the more damaging they are to our health, because um, when we breathe uh, particulate matter into our lungs, it's the very small particles that go the deepest into our lungs and create um, the most damage down deep in our lungs. And so um, sometime after the, the first set of criteria pollutants were promulgated, they also pro promulgated PM 2.5 um, as a criteria pollutant. The other uh, pollutants are um, um, nitrogen dioxide, sulfur dioxide, ozone, carbon monoxide, benzene, and lead. Uh, lead had been promulgated as a criteria pollutant because of lead in petrol, but uh, since for some time now, lead is no longer um, put into petrol, um, lead really doesn't have any impact on, on our um, air quality anymore, uh, but it, uh, it, they've never removed it as a criteria pollutant. And then some of the other pollutants that are of interest are um, hydrogen sulfide. So H2S is, is the rotten egg smell that you get uh, on, on some winter's days, especially when you um, go past uh, for either Sasselberg or Secunda, um, you get um, the, the rotten egg smell and that's caused by H2S. Sometimes, um, the concentrations of H2S can travel as far as Joburg, and, and on occasion there have been complaints that there's been this rotten egg smell over Johannesburg and, and uh, caused by that. Uh, volatile organic uh, uh, compounds are com uh, carbon compounds, and um, they, there's, there's numerous uh, different ones, um, uh, too many to mention. Uh, uh, benzene, for example, is one, and that can also have a very negative uh, health impact. Um, and then uh, more recently, uh, the greenhouse gases, CO2, N2O, and CH4 were um, promulgated as priority pollutants, um, but I'll talk a little bit more about that later. So those are uh, the pollutants. Pollutants are... Uh, divided into particulate matter, so the dust particles, ultrafine particles, and gases. Um, in South Africa, by far our most pressing um, air, air quality or pollution issue is PM, particulate matter, um, and that's for a variety of reasons. What are sources of air pollution? Um, so um, mostly air pollution is caused by burning of, of uh, fossil fuels, um, but by, by a number of other processes as well. So uh, the main uh, sectors are industry. So for example, ESCOM and its power stations falls under industry. Um, Sassel making um, um, Petrol from, from coal is, is an industry. Um, mines where they convert, um, you know, do uh, processing of ore uh, are, are, are to some extent industry. Um, so industry forms a large part of, of where air pollution comes from, but there are also what, what uh, in our industry are called non-industrial uh, sectors. So transport is, is one of those and uh, um, 
you know, all forms of transport largely uh, use petrol or diesel to to power power themselves, and so um, road, air, ship, rail, all, are all um, sources of air pollution when when the, when um, they burn those fuels. Residential fuel burning is is a, a significant contributor to poor air quality. Many of us. Um, um, don't either don't have access to uh, electricity or choose to use um, either coal or wood um, in our homes for for cooking or for uh, space heating. Um, commercial fuel burning is another uh, sector where um, uh, pollution is, is comes from and um, both of those residential and commercial fuel burning with with the onset of load shedding uh, many many of us use uh, generators either at home or at work uh, and they're definitely adding to um, uh, adding as a source of, of uh, pollution in the in the air mining um, especially dust from mining is a very big source of pollution Agriculture is a, a source of uh, pollution, uh, specifically um, <clears throat> um, there's two, two different types there. One is the, the crop um, farming where, where they plow the fields and, and cause dust uh, from, from that kind of burning. Um, in, in the sugarcane industry, they, they burn the sugarcane to make it easier to harvest. So that's a form of pollution. But also um, animals are a form of uh, uh, have emissions, um, both dust emissions when they walk around on the fields um, or, um, you know, um, cows are, are well known as a, as a high source of methane pollution, um, which is uh, uh, methane also happens to be uh, important in climate change. Waste. Waste is a, a, a source of air pollution from two different uh, um, point well three different points of view really one is um, from uh, wastewater treatment works so um, all all the waste from our from our houses and and industries go to to wastewater treatment works and and they can be um, sources of of gas emissions our landfills are um, as the as the waste breaks down it, it can create methane and and so they are a form of um, um, air pollution and then also in South Africa where sometimes waste gets doesn't get collected um, and and gets left to to um, sit on the streets uh, people are more and more starting to burn waste and this is becoming an increasingly important source of, of poor air quality uh, in in South Africa. Biomass burning is a is a huge source of um, air pollution. Um, that can be from uncontrolled natural burning from felt fires, or you know, sometimes felt fires are start um, started uh, on purpose. Um, in 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 the middle of Africa, large um, portions of Africa of the of the forest are burnt, and and sometimes that those emissions come all the way down to South Africa uh, from those um, uh, forest fires. Um, so uh, biomass burning is is a significant uh, contributor. Biogenic is is the natural emissions from plants, so it, it, it's mostly VOCs, uh, not that important. Lightning, um, every lightning strike causes uh, the creation of nitrogen dioxide. So it is seen as a as a source of, of air pollution, not something that we can control, of course, but as something that we look at. And then we have windblown dust. Uh, windblown dust comes um, off any exposed um, surfaces like, um, you know, um, uh, fields or, or, or felt that has been eroded, um, uh, mine dumps, um, all of those kind of things are, are sources of windblown dust. Uh, um, when the mine dumps around Johannesburg uh, can be on a on a windy day a very significant source of of dust, uh, and uh, of course because um, 
that 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 uh, dust has been processed that contains all sorts of toxins which which um, create additional uh, health issues so those are the the sources of air pollution and uh, we look at all of those when we try to manage um, air pollution so in south africa i'm, I'm going to talk about south africa's um, legislation because that's what i'm i'm familiar with um, in fact, South Africa's environmental legislation is, is relatively modern, um, and it's, it's actually a, a very good uh, set of environmental legislation. Um, the, uh, it's, it's kind of sourced around the Constitution, and four of the Constitution talks about our right to an environment that does not cause us harm. Then uh, in 1998, the National Environmental Management Act was promulgated. And the, the main thing about the, the NEMA was that it, 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 it tried to make um, management of the environment a, a participative uh, management. So um, I, I, I'm sure you've all seen those adverts in the newspaper that invite us to attend public participation meetings around environmental uh, impact assessments or any environmental changes. And uh, the, the NEMA uh, wanted to, to make the, the management of the environment uh, participatory in, from that point of view. And then the, uh, a number of different uh, acts were uh, promulgated um, because the NEMA is an overarching uh, environmental legislation. There's a number of acts that came after that, one of which is the Air Quality Act, Act 39 of 2004, uh, which specifically talks to, to air quality. Um, and um, that's, again, the, the Air Quality Act. The, the, main, the main thing about the Air Quality Act is that um, in the past, we had the, the air, uh, pol uh, air Pollution Prevention Act, the APA, um, and the way that the APA worked is that they looked exclusively at controlling emissions from industry. The main difference of the Air Quality Act was that they said, we're not going to look at um, the, the emission environment, we're going to look at the receiving environment. And so the way that the Air Quality Act is managed is, is by looking at ambient concentrations of pollutants at the places where people um, live and work. So um, um, ambient air quality concentrations are very important uh, in terms of the Air Quality Act. And we know whether or not the air quality is poor by looking at the ambient concentrations. And the way that we control the concentrations in the ambient air quality is by controlling emissions of, of pollutants into the atmosphere. Um, and, and so there was a fundamental shift in the way that air quality is managed in 2004. Um, the Air Quality Act is, is again, it's, a, it's, a, it's, it's like a framework act. And um, there have been many um, regulations published around the Air Quality Act since 2004, on average about two updates per year since 2004. And, and so the, there's been a lot of action and, and movement around the, the management of air quality uh, in, the, in the regulatory framework. Um, in some ways, the latest one around that is the, the promulgation this year, just recently, a few months ago, of the Climate Change Act. Um, and, uh, um, you know, uh, previously I spoke about um, the priority pollutants, the greenhouse gas. Greenhouse gases were promulgated as prior priority pollutants under the Air Quality Act. Um, when, when the Climate Change Act came into being uh, earlier this year, those, those prior, the management of those priority uh, pollutants moved to the Climate Change Act. So, um, the, the 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 legislation space around air quality is, is is very comprehensive in South Africa and over the last 20 years a lot of work has been done to capacitate um, government officials in being able to to 
enforce the the legislation um, the, the the legislation is very good but then sometimes the implementation and the enforcement of that has been lacking um and and some one of the i'll talk about one of the the results of that um lack of capacity just now these are some of the the uh, regulations that um came out um to support the air quality act um, the section 21 listed activities are, are how industry is controlled um, and you'll have heard on the news i'm sure lots around how escom are not meeting their minimum emission standards um, and that's that's where that comes from um, section 23 is controlled emitters it's basically boilers the dust control regulations um, are a very important uh, piece of legislation in South Africa, especially around mining, but it's it's being used more broadly these days. Uh, and there's a number of other um, regulations there that that help us to to manage um, air quality. Uh, and unfortunately, um, in my space, uh, not there's there's very few people who come to us and say, "Please, I'd like to clean up my act because I'm a good citizen." Um, mostly air quality, um, both on the government side and on the industry side, is is because people do. Um, it's 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 a little bit like uh, us going to the dentist. You know, we don't go to the dentist because we want to. We go to the dentist because we have to. And and it's a, it's the same around air quality management. People do it because they have to, rather than because they want to. So how do we manage air quality? Well, first of all, we need to know what the air quality is. Um, and, and that's through monitoring. And there is a, a multitude of different types of monitoring. In the center here, we have a very simple uh, monitoring device. It's called a, a dustfall sampler. Uh, in reality, it's just a five liter paint bucket on a stand. And we leave that out in the in the open for for a month and then we bring it back and we analyze uh, how much um, dust fell into that bucket um, and so that's a form of um, giving an indication of how much particulate matter is is in the air in a particular area um, on the top right here is a passive badge that's that's for measuring uh, ga gas pollutants um, it's, it's also a fairly crude form of, of monitoring, but it gives us an indication. And then um, this box here, this in the in the center, um, this we, we call it a, a monitoring station or a, a monitoring shelter, and and that shelter will contain, uh, as it shows on the the bottom right here. a number of analyzers. Each analyzer mes measures a different pollutant. Um, and and we call this a reference level station. So the, that's the the highest accuracy of monitoring that that you can obtain. Um, more recently, uh, because this is very expensive, a, a fully equipped station like this can cost anything between three and five million rand to 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 purchase, and 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 a, a, a significant chunk of money to run as well. Um, people are looking at alternatives, and on the on the left. On this lamppost here is a, a what we call a low cost sensor, and this little box contains um, electrochemical sensors that measure all the same parameters as a big shelter like like uh, the reference level station does, but at at much uh, much lower accuracy. So we use it as indicator uh, as an indicator as well. Sometimes it's not possible to, to measure air pollution, um, especially if we're looking at uh, proposed developments um, or because it's expensive, we, we look at uh, look predicting air quality using uh, dispersion modeling. And dispersion modeling is a method for us to, to, to predict if, if we have a source of air pollution in the middle, yeah, we can predict the concentrations um, in the surrounding areas. And the, the red line is the, the, the line where inside this line, the, the concentrations of that pollutant would exceed the, the national um, uh, ambient air quality standard. And then going out from that, the, the concentrations get less and less and less. 
And this tool helps us to, to, to predict uh, where uh, air pollution is going to end up and, and, and predict at what concentrations the pollution will be. Um, and we use this, this form of modeling uh, very widely in, in um, managing air quality. Once we know, you know where, what the air quality is through monitoring or, or, or estimations, we, we know that um, we need to control some sources of emissions. And certainly um, there are tools. It's not something that I deal with directly, but there, um, there are ways of, of reducing pollution into the atmosphere from processes like bag house filters. Um, we have electrostatic precipitators. We can use dust suppression by uh, on, uh, dust roads, for example. Um, unpaved roads are a very big source of, of um, particulate pollution, especially on, on, for example, open cast mines. And so suppress, uh, dust suppression can take the form of either water or chemicals. And then there's um, storage dumps or story, um, storage of particulates um, can be controlled by covering them. Uh, it, where that's practical. So there are a number of things that we can do to reduce um, the concentrations of pollutants. A um, number of other um, ways that we can do that as well um, by by reducing activities. Um, for example, um, vehicles that that travel at a lower speed um, will emit fewer pollutants. Um, if they travel on a tar road rather than a dust road, then again, uh, pollution will be reduced. So the, those are the kinds of tools that we look at when we try to manage or, or look at managing um, emissions of pollutants into the atmosphere. I said that I would uh, give you a kind of uh, overview of how we've been doing um, in managing air quality uh, in 2000 and in the uh, six, uh, the Vol Triangle Airshed was promulgated as a priority area in terms of air quality, which allowed the national government to step in. Um, control of air pollution is a local government function, so um, national government can only step in, in in those areas where pollution problems are seen to be um, multi-province issues. So the Vault Triangle was promulgated and it includes the northern part of the Free State and the southern part of Gauteng. Um, this, this graph shows the um, how the PM10 concentrations at, at six different um, air quality monitoring stations in the Vault Triangle have uh, performed. The red line is the National Ambient Air Quality Standard, and you can see that for the most part um, over the years, the, the, the air pollution has stayed um, in exceedance of the, of the standard. So despite the fact that lots of work has been done to reduce air pollution, um, the, the ambient uh, concentrations are, are still above the standard and, and um, all players, government, industry are looking at this and, 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 and working at, at fixing that. And there's a multitude of reasons why these, these levels haven't come down. One of which is that our populations are increasing and, and more and more people are emitting more and more um, pollution into the atmosphere. Um, I, I just put a few things here uh, from from the news, um, and there's still lots of complaints about air quality. Um, this one here on the top left says these SA towns top the list of the worst air quality in Africa. Um, there's a, a current a matter in the news around uh, Kaya Sands where um, waste is being burned and, and the, the, the people in the northern suburbs are really struggling with, with the, the impacts of air, uh, poor air in that area. My, my brother recently, he, he immigrated to the Netherlands some six years ago and he came to visit uh, just a few months ago and uh, we had a really nice hazy <laughs> winter's day 
and he, he looked over the valley and he said, you know, uh, if if the air looked like this in Amsterdam, they would have they would have evacuated the city. And um, so we 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 tend to to forget that uh, poor air quality is is actually something that we really need to pay attention to and 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 take heed of. So despite the 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 legislation we we still struggle on a day-to-day -day basis with poor air quality in South Africa and especially in the, um, the big cities around South Africa. Um just quickly uh, climate change um obviously climate change and and air quality are linked um because they're both uh, linked to the atmosphere and um so um, certainly when um, air pollution, air pollutants are released, often at the same time greenhouse gases are released. They're not the same. Air pollutants are not the same as greenhouse gases, uh, but they are linked. And there's definitely a move to saying that um, when you reduce air pollution, you also uh, reduce the emissions of greenhouse gases. Also, the, the, the increasing impacts of climate change, like the increasing um, average temperatures, um, make the, the, the health impacts of air pollution on, on people worse. So there's that, that kind of link between climate change and air quality that, you know, the, uh, that happens all the time. Um, also, because... Um, Climate is worsening. Some some um, pollutants are are being generated. Uh, ground level ozone is is generated as a function of of higher temperatures um, at, at ground level. So uh, that that can also have a, an impact there. Right. So how can I know what the air is like where I am currently? There is a number of tools that we can look at. Um, if you look at uh, on our on our phones, if you look at your weather app and you scroll down, you can usually get an air quality index, and an air quality index is a a, a combination of all the different pollutants into one number, um, and so like um, the South African Air Quality Information System, they they happen to have an app that shows the different uh, monitoring stations. And when the, the little dots are green over that station, it means the air quality is good. If it's red like this, it means that the air quality is really poor. There are a number of websites where you can look at um, um, that that will give um, what the what the air quality is uh, in in a in a particular area. So there are ways these days of knowing what the air quality is like where we are at and and. Um, we can take action. For example, if the air quality is really bad outside, staying indoors is a good idea because usually um, the air quality inside the house is, is cleaner than, than outside. What can we do around air quality? Um, so the World Health Organization has a whole lot of um, recommendations for governments, for cities and communities. But uh, for us as, as um, individuals, um, you know, we can, one of the things we can do is stand up for our right to a healthy and sustainable environment and hold our government accountable. And uh, the Center for Environmental Rights is doing a really good job around that. Um, individually, we can, we can also think about how we live and consume. And every time we drive our cars, we, 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 we creating pollution every time we switch on a light if if our electricity comes from escom's coal powered fire stations we're we're adding to to um to to um air pollution so we need to think of the usual things you know recycle re, re reduce uh, reuse create less weight waste and also create awareness um every you know fires Fires create air pollution, and, and the more that people know that, the more action we can take to prevent either the impact on people's health or, or try to reduce air, air quality air emissions. So back to UMPO. 
um, obviously, um, it's the poor that 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 bear the brunt of air quality. Um, the poor are forced to use uh, poor quality coal in their homes or, or wood to burn, to cook with, or to to keep themselves warm. And and uh, because these emissions are right at the place where people are are living and and sleeping and um, doing what they need to do, these low level pollution sometimes are much worse than than um, in terms of impact than what comes out of an ESCOM stack. Not that we shouldn't look at ESCOM stacks, but um, certainly the poor bear the brunt of, of poor air quality and the impacts of climate change. Um, so that's in some ways a, a fairly dark <laughs> look, but um, I always come back to to the one of the last uh, things that Pope Francis said in, in Laudato Si, and um, he kind of ended on a fairly positive note and he said, God who calls us to generous commitment and to give him our all offers us the light and the strength needed to continue on our way. In the heart of this world, the Lord of life who loves us so much is always present. He does not abandon us. He does not leave us alone for he has united himself definitively to our earth and his love constantly impels us to find new ways forward. Praise be to him. So um, even though environmental issues can be quite dark, the, there is there is something that we can do, and we can um, find ways to 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 improve the in environment and specifically the air quality. So the the air quality imperative, I think I've shown why it is important. I've described what is air quality. I've uh, spoken a bit about how we manage air quality. I've looked at the links between air quality and climate change. I've um, indicated how we can each of us know what the air quality is in our area. And I've given some pointers on what we as individuals and communities can do. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Martin, <clears throat> for that insightful uh, presentation. So we, we already have about three questions on the chat box. Uh, the first one is about the law enforcement agencies on the, the regulations that you mentioned. Are they, who are they or where are they and how can uh, offenders, especially uh, uh, companies, small companies, especially in the townships, how can they be reported? And then the second question there, that is, the, are there emissions from indoor cooking affecting people in South Africa? What is the best fuel to use for cooking? And then the third question is, how would you define a just transition from Pumalanga residents who are most exposed to air pollution, but where communities oppose the closure of coal power, station, power stations? Maybe if you could deal with those first three and then let's see what happens next. Yeah, so in South Africa, um, local government are responsible for for management of air quality. And so um, the best way to to deal with uh, problems around air quality, quality is to report it to the environmental health officials in, in the local government. Uh, every, every municipality has environmental health um, officials. And um, uh, you just need to to find find them and and report it to them. They 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 are responsible for for dealing with um, air quality issues uh, at a local level. Um, and they and they have wide ranging powers. Um, I I deal on a daily basis with with uh, industries that come to me because they've been issued with a notice um, of intent to close them down because they're not uh, um, complying with the air quality uh, legislation. So definitely um, speak to the local municipality about that. Um, of course, if there's no joy there, you can, you can escalate it to high levels of government, but it's certainly the, the starting point is, is the local municipality. Um, in terms of um, cooking, so um, the cleanest 
the cleanest way to cook is to use electricity <laughs> because uh, for in your house um, there's no there's no emissions from cooking if you use electricity and uh, um, the the if electricity is generated uh, far away from you that it means that inside your house your your air is cleaner. Um, other than that, I, I would recommend gas rather than coal or or wood. Um, gas is a fairly a fairly clean uh, fuel to use. Um, and of course, using um, solar power um, to generate um, is is by far the best way to you know from a, from an air quality emissions point of view. Um, and then the last question was um, around the the just transition for the residents of Mpumalanga. So I mean that's a that's a very thorny issue. Um, many, many, many thousands of people rely on the industry around the coal-powered fire stations for their livelihoods. Um, but also as a result, they're the ones most at risk um, from um, the, 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 the health impacts related to the, the burning of that coal. So um, the one of the one of the things that there's a number of things that are that are taking place um, uh, at at government level. One of the one of the things that government is trying to do in terms of reducing the impacts of ESCOM's um, emissions are looking at offsets. ESCOM ESCOM's emissions are of of are very complicated from from the fact that the the coal powered fire stations are becoming older, so it's, it's becoming harder and harder to to control those emissions from those power stations, and to to maintain or to put in place uh, the required interventions to to reduce those emissions would be extremely too costly. So. Um, Government is looking at a, a program um, of offsets. Um, a lot of research and work is being done into looking at how do we reduce the the emissions from from at 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 um, community level. So a lot of um, what I, the pictures I showed you of people burning coal in their houses to or wood in their houses to to cook or to for space heating heating have very detrimental uh, impacts and even though the amount of um, in terms of tons per annum of pollutant from those activities are, are relatively low the impact is very high because they're right at where people uh, live and breathe and so uh, ESCOM is being allowed to put in place interventions in terms of electrification um, putting in um, ceilings and and insulation to to make the, those houses uh, such that those emissions are much less at at the local household and there's a, uh, quite a bit of success around that so that's one of the interventions that they're looking at um the other thing is to to for, is to start educating people around the impacts of of poor air quality and the fact that um when when we transition from a coal a powered fire um, coal powered um, um, power stations to um, to more sustainable forms of of energy, that um, it's it's likely that jobs will also transition from the from the coal industry to to this new industry and. Um, so, but it uh, it is a very complicated um, issue, and uh, that um, it's it's dealing with the trans uh, the just transition is um, is not easy. Usually, the the just uh, transition is spoken of in terms of climate change, um, and and the fact is is that um, we're a developing country. And uh, we, you know, we need energy in order to develop our country. And and at the moment, the 
historically the cheapest and the easiest way to to create that electricity has been through burning coal that is abundant on the Pumalanga High Felt. Um, so yeah, it's it's not yeah. a it's not a simple answer that I'm afraid. Thanks, Martin. We've got two more questions that have just come up on the chat box. Uh, one is related to health. Has any research been done around the increase in or decrease in cardiovascular diseases, respiratory diseases, et cetera, in relation to air quality? I suppose this is from South African perspective. And then uh, the second one is uh, about legislation, about uh, are there any legislations or yeah, that have been passed in more developed countries with a better air quality that ensure that crimes against air quality are punished and do the national budgets allocate funds to improve air quality? Well, yeah, it's... Um, sorry, Rampa, can you just uh, remind me what the first question was? The first question is about from a health point of view, uh, 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 there any uh, a study that has been done to show whether there is increase or decrease in uh, either cardiovascular respiratory diseases in relation to air quality? Yeah, so the I mean, uh, there's there's no doubt that uh, poor air quality has has a uh, a detrimental um, is detrimental to our health. Um, South Africa's ambient air quality. Uh, air quality standards the, the concentrations that are set there are related to the research around um our uh, human health and so there's no doubt that having uh, low lower concentrations of pollutants will result in in healthier living um, and there's a multitude of of um, research uh, that has been done around that for the different types of pollutants um, in terms of the legislation, um, I mean, all almost all developed countries have have um, legislation around air quality, and and most of it, the, the in, in in for example, Europe, the the ambient concentrations that are required um, are much, in fact, much stricter than in South Africa, um, but uh, those countries. Uh, have have more money to to monitor. They have more money to enforce. They have more money to to put in place the interventions that are required to reduce the emissions from air quality. Um, so you you know uh, the the whole um, air quality management regime in in Europe is is much stricter than in in Africa in general and in South Africa in particular. Thank you, thank you so much, Martin. Uh, we have uh, exhausted all all the questions that uh, we have on the on the chat box. So uh, the there was a question about uh, the recordings. Yes, uh, the uh, both this talk and last week's talks they will be available on the Jesuit Institute's uh, uh, YouTube channel. Uh, hopefully by the end of the week or next week. So they will they will be available and we'll post the link. So next week we will be hosting uh, Professor Chitonge from uh, the UCT. He will be talking to us about uh, financing the green transition in Africa. Thank you so much for attending and thank you so much, Martin, for your presentation. And uh, uh, I hope uh, everybody enjoyed it. Thank you very much and uh, have a wonderful evening. Thank you.